good. God is doing a new thing. Yep, that one. John's trying to get me to start dancing is what it is. I just, for my own heart, uh, how many grew up with DC Talk? Anybody else in here? Anybody grew up at church, kid? There was that moment. That's, John, <laughs> that's, that's John's yelling holler up in the back. Like, so the moment that that little clip came out and it started with, God is doing a new, I was like, all of it came sing flooding more of that, back. But I think you got a good thing going. I think you should sing a little more. Don't. Why? You're supposed to help and protect Do me. Do you think not, you should sing not, a little more? Not push me into. Guys, we'll have, you missed. When we did run through, I'm pretty sure we, we went through like four or five DC Talk songs. Uh, and men's breakfast. They're, men's breakfast, bacon, and throwback DC Talk. I, I'm just telling you, it's, it just doubled. We need 90s more bacon. 90s Christian karaoke. Hallelujah. John, so, you in? John said he's doing it. So I feel we're, like, we're I don't know. Go. I can't see, but I feel like he nodded. Good morning, he turned, friends. He turned my mic off. How are you doing this off. morning? Did you hear that? Did that was genius. <laughs> I appreciate you. It really is Vision Sunday. We promise. It's not DC Talk Sunday, though we do like DC Talk. But kind of. So. Okay. That was, hey, is fun recap. I'm so excited for today. I feel like, uh, I feel like that message was, was months ago. It was really only a couple of weeks, uh, but it's been a little bit. Uh, I'm glad that it's there because the importance, though, of, of these two messages together is really that they have to go together. We started with who we are before we talk about what we do. And that's got to be important because I, I, I don't want you to leave here today uh, and, and think like, wow, this is a church that just like must believe in faith by works because we're going to do a lot of things. That's not true. Um, what we do all comes from who we are. Last, last time we were together, we talked about the, the word for the year is new, which is what led us down the DC Talk trail that was there. Um, I believe that God has some incredible things in store for us. I believe that, that there's, there's new that is happening, but for that to happen, we talked last week about God is, is doing a new thing, that, that we need to understand that it's a new thing that's there. So while we talk about who we are, we are created, we are a new creation in Christ, Therefore, we step yeah. into the new uh, that God has in for us. Uh, it's not works-based, understanding who we are. That's why it's so important uh, for us. Amen. In a new year, 2022, we said our focus is new. We said we're a people on a mission, and it's Vision Sundays. We had part one. This is part two. So I said in part one, we use the word vision. And I even asked my kids last night, what do you think vision means? What does vision mean? And Grayson, he's 10, he said, you mean like the plan? And Jovi is seven, and she said, you mean like how you see stuff? And I said, yeah. So it's all of that, right? Vision means different things to different people. In this sense, we believe God has given us a mission, what we're going to talk about, what we do but when we hear the word vision, sometimes we can think of um, like a prophetic vision, like a supernatural vision, and God does that through the Holy Spirit. We can think of a plan. We can think of inspiration. But we want you guys to focus really on this concept of new. To receive the new, we have to become new. And as we hear vision and mission and the plan for this year, for us as a local church, I think what God is saying to us is that it's not about hearing something that's groundbreaking, hearing something that maybe you've never heard before. And if you've never heard it, that's awesome. But it's not so much about hearing something you've never heard. It's going to be about doing something maybe you've never done. There's a Hebrew understanding, a Hebrew proverb, a way of teaching and learning that says if you know something, you will be found doing it. And if you're not found doing this or doing whatever it is that you've learned, you don't really know it. We are a words, knowledge, accumulation-based kind of culture. When we say learn, it's like we read, we hear it, we understand it cognitively. In the culture that Jesus operated in, yep. to learn something, the evidence of learning something and also the evidence that we have become the new people that God has created us to be, is that it can be seen, is that we are found doing it. Does that make sense? We wanna be people who don't just hear exciting things, but people who are found doing what it is that God has for us to do, amen? So we have vision this year. 
You want to spin that around, bud? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So this year, we're really excited. And it's not because it's super revelatory. It's not because it's brand new or really original. It's because it's simple. And it can be done, and it can be shared. The word says that when there's a vision, the ones that carry the vision should write the vision and make it plain so that people can run who carry it. Amen? And we want to be people who carry this vision. So for 2022 and beyond, friends, the vision is love, build, and serve. Love, build, and serve. And everything that we believe God is calling us to do and to run after as a church family will fall within those three words. There's a lot of overlap. One leads to another, leads to another, and leads right back to the first one. It's all interconnected. And as we function as the body of Christ here in this church family and into our community and beyond, the vision that we want to see come to pass is that we love, we build, and we serve. And so Brandon is going to talk about love. Yeah. So love's where it all begins. Like, love, love is, is where it all begins. And now hear me, not just here at Weatherstone. Like, love is where it all begins, like, all of it. Like, if you consider yourself a follower of Jesus, the baseline that we must do is to love the world around us. Jesus made it super clear in John chapter 13. He said this, A new command I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, the people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is actually how people know that you're a follower of Jesus. Like, it's not about, it's not about do you do all of the right things. It's not about, like, your, your actions. It's not about if you're preaching constantly in your office or in your school or wherever it may be. It's literally by your actions, by your love. And what's so much fun about this Sometimes we forget this. I think sometimes we read scripture and we look at it and we're like, well, that's a really good suggestion. <laughs> uh, there's a reason that Jesus said, a new command I give you. This is not Jesus saying, I think this would be good for you. You know, take it or leave it. You know, like, you know, just, just ponder. It's probably going to work out well, so try it. He said, no, no, no. This is a command that I give you. This is a command that I give you that you would love one another. So even some of the things that we're talking about today, it's not about, it's not about starting new programs. It's not about starting new, new events and like holding different things so that we can, we can do more as a church. It's really, it's about being strategic and having opportunities to love each other, to love our community, to love the world as, as a whole, and to do so better. I don't, I don't want to be, hear me, I don't want to be busy this year. I want to be intentional. I don't want to just do more. And I think that's, that's the, the, the back and forth of this. Actually, James says it this way. James chapter 2 is this whole like faith and works and then people are trying to, to figure this out. Like what do I have to do? Because again, inside of this culture, uh, a little bit of background, James, the brother of Jesus, is actually one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And they're coming from this, this Judaism culture, this Jewish culture, where you have to prove every, like everything is about how well do you keep the Sabbath? How well do you keep all of these rules that are there? And are you doing all of the right things? And he's, he's like, it, there's, there's, this, there's this balance between, between our faith and, and the works that we do. James says, uh, chapter two, verse 14, starting there, it says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? Pause here for a second, all right? This is not about James trying to get people to do more. This is him describing the faith that they have, okay? 110%, we believe that you are saved by faith, not by works. We're not, we don't do things to gain God's approval. We do things because God has, has freed us from sin. Like, Hear me, you, don't, you, you can't get to a point where you just like, do enough that God will be like, all right, fine, I guess you're in. Like, I guess, I guess we'll allow, you're useful enough for the kingdom, you, you can get here. That's not how it works. But what, what James is saying is when you experience this level of freedom, what happens is, is you start to do strategic, the right things 
to, to give people and show people the same freedom and the same faith that you have. It's as if a brother or sister, continuing on, is poorly clothed and lacking daily food. And one of, them, one of you says to them, hey, go in peace. Be warm and filled without giving them the things they need for their body. What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So what he's explaining here isn't, he's not saying the church should just do more and be really, really busy and just do all the things. Like, that's not what he's saying. But what he's saying is a church that is on fire, a people group, not, not Weatherstone, but literally a, a body of believers that, that have leaned into who Jesus is and leaned into his teaching are the type of people that what they're going to do is they're going to look like this. Instead of just going, hey, the community, uh, there's people that we know that, oh man, I really feel bad uh, that they don't have a place to stay in the winter in Wisconsin. That's cold. I hope they find a good place. Like, man, you know, um, spring break is coming up for, for kids at school. And I know for some of them, like, that's also, like, their meal uh, that's there because they don't have food at home. Like, man, I really hope somebody shows up. There's that type of people. And it's even to, to, to spiritualize it and say, you know, we're gonna, let's pray for those people. First of all, we should pray. Like, prayer, prayer is powerful. It says the prayer of the righteous is powerful, right? So, yes, we pray, but we also do. There's things that compel us to go, no, no, no. If I have the ability with inside me, I'm going to show them the love of Jesus. God didn't just say, hey, I love you. Take my word for it. He said, I love you, and I'm willing to send my son to prove it. I'm willing to send my son to, to go. We realize that salvation is instant, okay? Freedom is instant. You don't earn that. You receive it. But once we receive it, we then walk into freedom. It's like if there's a person who's, who's uh, in prison and then they find out that, the per that they actually didn't do what they were convicted for, right? And the, the prison guard comes over and the jailer, he opens it up. He's like, hey, we're really sorry. Uh, you're free to go. In that moment, they're free. But there's also a part of it where they have to stand up and walk out, Right? Like the door can be open, but you can still sit in that cell for as long as possible. Like there's the freedom is there. You have freedom on paper, but there's a moment where we walk into the freedom and do what we're supposed to do. Staying in the same analogy, what we do doesn't free us, okay? It's not like Jesus said to us, oh, by the way, you're free, but I expect some community service to pay off your time, all right? It's not. It's literally, it's moments where we get to go after and we get to say, hey, because I am free, I will not take this freedom for granted. So I am going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to love people so well. I'm going to, I'm going to get after uh, the things that God has called and created me to be. What we realize is that love is the base. Everything we do is, is, is to love each other, to love love our community, to love the world, to show people the love of God that we have experienced. Therefore, we start with love. And from there, we get to build. Amen. Amen. So good. It's such a simple and such a foundational part of what it means to follow Jesus, to experience his love and to show and share his love, right? I think sometimes we gloss over that. We don't think about that enough. We don't prioritize that and really think about that enough. So the foundation, the base, the start of everything that we do has to be the love of God. Amen? So good. Amen. I'm going to share with you, bud. Technology is a fun thing, friends. Sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. So love, build, serve. Everybody say love, build, serve. You got it? Amen. We're going to say that a lot together. So build. What does it mean to build? So we want to love people, share the love of God. We want to build healthy followers of Jesus, individuals, healthy families, and build the kingdom. We want to build individuals who follow Jesus, healthy, fully developed, strong individuals who follow Jesus. We want to build healthy families because we are the church, amen? And the world needs to see healthy families who follow Jesus because that's where the change begins. We always say, change the world. That's how you change the world. You start in your home, through your kids, 
and through your family and the community. And we want to build the kingdom. The power and the plan for building the kingdom, it all lies with God. His power, his plan. He builds his kingdom. Jesus said, I will build my church, right? And that's us. We partner with, we work with God as his kingdom comes and his will is done here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? We want to build his kingdom. And in Ephesians 2 and Ephesians 4, we see scripture that helps us to wrap our minds around this concept of build. Building healthy followers of Jesus, healthy families, and building the kingdom. So in Ephesians 2, 19 to 22, and this is in the NIV version, if you're going to follow along. It says, consequently, you can go and read the beginning of the chapter. You, that's us, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, part of God's family, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building, which is us, is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Before Jesus came and before the Holy Spirit was poured out, the temple was one singular place. Because of Jesus and because he gave us the gift of his Holy Spirit and we have the Holy Spirit, we are each and collectively the temple. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Jesus is within us. It's amazing. So we are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Individual followers of Jesus and families building the kingdom up together. In Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, and then 15 to 16, it says, So Christ himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. We call that the five-fold ministry. Different ways that we're all called. Some of us are called to some of these roles, and there are other spiritual gifts as well. And all of us together, as members of the body of Christ, family of God, that's what God uses. To equip his people for works of service, like we're talking about, so that the body of Christ may be built up in, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Everything we do, the goal is to become more like Jesus. The new, create, the new creation that he's created us to be, everything we do is to follow him and become more like him so that we can walk as he walked in this world. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So this is where we get this concept and this goal of building Christ followers, healthy families, and building the kingdom. This is how God has designed it to work, that we would carry the gospel, which is the ultimate goal, the vision, that we would carry the gospel, the good news about Jesus, to every person, everywhere, through healthy followers of Jesus, being built up to become more like Christ, healthy families in our community, in our society, and that is how we carry and are the kingdom of God in this world. That's how God builds his kingdom. So we want to love, we want to build, and we want to serve. Thought it was more DC talk. At least. Um, but there's some practical ways. So when we get into serve, uh, that's the practical ways that we do it. Like, so what is it that we're going to do? So I want to let you know of a few things that are coming up this year that we are super pumped about. And I want to give you a little bit of a heart behind it as well. Uh, the first way that we are going to uh, serve us in this place, become community, uh, is we are going to start first Wednesdays. So here's what's coming up. On the first Wednesday of every month, we are going to gather together as a church. And it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to have, it's in this, this building, so it's, it's, I mean, there's only so much we can do there. But what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, with food. There's some chuckles, but I was waiting for amens on that. Hallelujah. Okay? Here's the thing. When, when I look at the growth of the early church, and when I look at, like, 
people meeting in families. And honestly, if you just look into Jewish culture, a lot of Middle Eastern culture that Jesus would have done his teaching in, a lot of it was based around a table. It wasn't, it wasn't a lecture hall where everyone sits in rows and listens to this person speak, but it's this moment where, where we, we do life together. One of my, one of my deep passions um, for, for our church is that we would be such an incredible tight-knit community. That it wouldn't just be a place where you, you show up, you're, you kind of come in together and you notice who's dropping kids off in about the same rooms and you kind of give them a high as you're like disheveled and trying to get kids checked in and everything else and then get in here. So you're like, oh yeah, I know who they are, whatever, but really to have relationships. So we want to just build time for relationships. So we're going to start with food at 545. We'll have dinner for about 30 minutes. That's um, for, for everybody, for your family, all that. And then uh, at about... Uh, 6.15, we'll open the doors and, and we'll come into this place uh, and we will do worship together as a church. After worship, um, we'll have youth and kids break off because it's a youth night. We want to make sure the youth still has youth. We want to make sure the kids still hang out with kids, that everyone gets to, to, to speak um, on their level. Uh, adults, we're going to hang out in here for a little bit longer and have a short teaching, but then also there's going to be strategic time where we come together, whether we clump up in here or whether we head back out to tables where we're eating or whatever it may be in groups and just have conversation. Here's, here's again, we, we look at church and I think so often when we think church, uh, we think building or service right? Like you'll ask people like, what church do you go to? Or, or what does your church look like? Or, or, and and it's, it's a number of things. You're going you're gonna to explain a location in a building. You're going to explain uh, an a order of service that it is. In all reality, the church is, is the body of Christ. Yeah. It's the people coming together. Yeah. Um, the, the first picture of the early church, right? Acts chapter 2 is this, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to fellowship, to breaking of bread, can I get an amen? amen, and to prayer. Like that's, that's what it's about. That's what church is about. Hear me, we're going to continue to do this on Sunday mornings. I believe that this gathering is important. But again, as we continually say, we don't exist to gather, we gather to go. There's got to be times and moments where we come together to, to build community. There's going to be times where, where we need each, not times, always we need each other, but there's going to be my, times where it's, it's more and more prevalent, where we realize like, you know what, this is a season where I need, I need my, my church to have my back. There's other seasons where you're going to need that, and then we as a church are going to be like, you know what, we got you. That's what the church is. It's not a really good service. It's not really well put together. It's not all of that. I think all of that is part of how we present Jesus to the world, but really the church in its basic form is, is community. It's discipleship. It's leaning in together, um, getting to, to know each other, not being a part of a, a lecture hall, if you will, but really being the church and coming together. So starting in March, uh, the first Wednesday in March, we will begin first Wednesdays. I encourage you to be there and be a part of it. Uh, again, there's ways where we ask you, like we do a lot of times, to register. Uh, it's not going to cost you anything, but we want to make sure that we feed everybody. Uh, so please do that. And we're, just, we're really looking forward um, to this year leaning into community together and really um, growing closer uh, to each other. So again, I know, again, real quick, I'll throw this out there. For those of you that are involved in core groups that happen on Wednesday nights, they're going to pause that day. And we're going we're gonna to come together as a church because I think it's important. And then we'll go back. So for those of you that do things every Wednesday night, we're going to keep doing it. But the first Wednesday night of each month, we're going to come together for first Wednesdays. And I believe God's going to move mightily uh, through community together as we lean into that. I'm excited. I think when we purpose to do things that are in God's heart, his blessing is on it, and it's going to be so good, and we can get excited. It's okay to get your hopes up. I think it's a year where God is saying, it's okay to get your hopes up. And we are, when we are running after things like this that are God's heart to love, to build, to serve, as simple as it sounds, God's heart has never changed. That is God's heart. So I think it's so exciting. And in serving, it's serving one another as the body of Christ, 
always with an external focus, always being inclusive, always looking to who's the next one and the next one and the next one that needs to know outside of these walls, who is it that needs to hear? And they don't need to come here to hear the gospel, amen, because we carry the gospel, but we want to be diligent to steward this place, this beautiful building, and use it as a tool to gather, to serve one another, and to reach our community, amen. We're going to do that through ways to connect. Sisterhood nights, we had sisterhood night. Was anybody there on Friday? Ladies, we had about 100. Brandon was awesome and served up in the booth doing pro presenter. He said, once you've been a youth pastor, you can pretty much do anything. So it was awesome. Pastor Matt was there to serve. Rick, you're there. Jerry was there. So many people. Josh, so many guys. And the worship team, everybody pitched in. It was awesome. We had about 120 ladies that came. And Candace Herkman, our friend from Minneapolis was our speaker. It was awesome. So we want to provide opportunities like men's breakfast, like having First Wednesday. We've got some fun family events coming up that you'll hear more about. Marriage nights, because we want to serve one another and build healthy families and healthy marriages. Amen. So we want to provide some of these things. You'll hear more details coming down the pike about these things in the coming weeks. We want you to be involved. And as we provide opportunities, it's not just so that we can be a social club unto ourselves. Please hear me, friends. And I think that we're unified in that. I think that we understand that. But let's always keep it on our minds that when we are gathering, it's for a purpose. It's so that we can be built up and equipped and energized and discipled and be on the same page. Because the mission is so great that we need to go and we need to have that strong support, that strong foundation, that strong connection to be built up in order to go. It's all for a reason. The purpose is never so that we all collect and stay here in this place as nice as it is. The goal is to be built up and empowered and equipped to go always. Kingdom Builders. We're going to hear about Community Care, which is our local branch of Kingdom Builders. But Kingdom Builders, we have been working towards and talking about being Kingdom Builders since Brandon and I have been privileged to be here as a part of this church family in the last three years. And so this past year, together, we were able to give $136,842 to Kingdom Builders above and beyond everything that we give through the tithe and offerings for this house. But we were able to send that money to local and global ministries around the world. That leaves here. By December 31st, that money is gone. And so we give so that we can serve locally, globally, and the next generation to build the kingdom. For 2022, our goal as a church family is $200,000. We want to challenge and stretch ourselves. And we value generosity. We pursue the heart of God in generosity. So that's not that everybody gives the same amount, but that's everybody on the same page asking the Lord, God, what would you have me give? Because he's going to bless us. He always blesses us. And out of the overflow of what is already his, we're going to collectively prioritize kingdom builders. And the goal is $200,000. Now, does the amount matter? We are not a numbers and money obsessed place, but does the amount matter? I think us being diligent to exercise that generosity muscle matters individually and collectively. We put our faith in Christ. We put our faith in God. And as he provides, we will just give out of the overflow of what he's already given to us for his kingdom. So I'm excited. You have to plan to be generous. Have a plan to be generous. So I would encourage us all as individuals and as families, pray and ask the Lord, what can we do? Ask your kids, what can we do? How can we shift our life so that we can better prioritize God's kingdom and ministries globally and helping the gospel be preached around the world? My bad, John. It's my fault, not his. I'll tell you when it's his fault, though, because he turned my mic off before. That one wasn't. I've got a really good idea. If you're wondering how, How can we be a part of Kingdom Builders? What is something practical that we can do? Uh, If you were a part of 30 for Freedom last year, uh, we are doing 30 for Freedom again this year, and the date is May 14th. So you can throw that on your calendar right now. Uh, I'm super excited. So here's the thing. This is what 30 for Freedom is. If you weren't here or or weren't weren't a part of that, um, 30 for Freedom, one of our Kingdom Builders partners is Venture. 
It's actually where Paul and Candace Herkman uh, are, are serving. They're executive directors there. Uh, and with that, as we were just dreaming about how we can not just give, but how can we experience, how can we be a part of what's going on? One of the amazing things that Venture does is they give opportunities for us to do something. So 30 for Freedom was birthed uh, a few years ago, and it's really this, this crazy plan to in one day run 30 miles. I was waiting for amens. I didn't know if anyone else was going to run 30 miles. Um, run 30 miles um, to raise money and awareness for anti-human trafficking in vulnerable places of the world. What we did last year is, yes, there's a 30-mile portion of it, but there's also a 5K and a 10K. No amens there either. I just didn't know if it was going to be, hey, thank you. But we had, he, listen, we had people that, um, that walked a 5K. We had families that, that pushed strollers uh, for a 5K. You can do a 10K. You can do whatever it may be. It's, on, it's here. We actually start here and then use the New Berlin Trail, which is really close to us. It's a great trail. It's, it's wonderful. Like, it's an awesome event. But it's a way for us not just to say, hey, would you be willing to give? But it's a way to actually step out and do. One of the things that I love about 30 for Freedom is the ability to involve your family. Uh, we had our entire family as a part of it last year. Um, Amber ran a 10K. Let's go. Uh, and yeah, yeah, you clap for that. Let's go. With that, I pushed Gunner in a stroller uh, for the 10K. Both of our, yes. Thank you. Uh, I made sure the tires were pumped up so it was easier. Um, both of our boys ran a 10K at 11 and 9. And our daughter at the age of 6, she was 7. She was 7 at the time. She just turned 7, um, ran a 5K. And it was this moment where not just that, but in the training leading up to it, to have conversations with our kids when they're like, why are we doing this? Um, to realize and say, hey, there's people and there's children on the other side of the world that don't have the privileges that we have and to have an incredible opportunity to explain to them why we do what we do. There's a lot of the giving that we do that they don't see. Like they're not a part of our, our finances, especially when you're paying stuff online and doing it all, doing all of that transactions online. But to be able to get out of a seat and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're called to do. We're called to impact the world. Even people that we may not in person meet, but we're there to, to bring them freedom. And what I love about Venture is, is not only are they rescuing families, kids, uh, children from human trafficking, but they're also investing in that community. They're helping them uh, with, with agriculture so they can be self-sustaining that pulls them out of the poverty cycle that makes them susceptible to human trafficking. They plant churches because they realize we can feed as many bellies as possible, but if we get them to longer in age but still don't get them to heaven, our job is not finished. So they plant churches in those communities. It's, it's this holistic moment. And we said, you know what? We want to get on board and be a part of that. And it's a way for us, not just us, but for also us to partner with other churches and say, hey, let's do this together. Let's do something that's bigger than our church. Let's do something that's bigger than our, than, than our building that's, that's, that's impacting our world. So I encourage you, there's more information that's going to be coming out. But I encourage you, uh, mark May 14th down uh, and, and let's do something incredible for the kingdom of God uh, through 30 for Freedom. Community, community Care is a branch locally here partnering with organizations and other ministries and just other parts of our community, school systems, um, law enforcement, different opportunities right here locally where we can impact and serve our community. So Joanna Keen is my friend, our friend, and her heart is to serve and serve the community. She is our, she's coming now, she's going to join us. And you can give her a hand. She has stepped into this role recently. I'm going to switch spots with you, friend. And she's our community care director. So she's going sh to share a little bit of her heart, what community care is, and why we believe God has called us to build this into our vision for this year and beyond. Thank you so much, Pastor Amber. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with you today again and reintroduce myself a little bit to you. Um, we are privileged and blessed in this church to have these two, Pastor Brandon and Pastor Amber. Are we not? 
their hearts for the kingdom, their hearts for the community, their hearts for you and me. It's so big, and we are privileged and honored. So I am privileged and honored to stand on this stage and to even just say anything at all about participating on a team with them. So community care and a little bit of my story. Let me start with who I am, okay? So I am married. I have been living in Wisconsin for a really long time. And my husband, Mr. Norm, as he is affectionately called by the kids' ministry team, is sitting right there. He loves it when you go up to him and talk to him. He loves big hugs and lots of attention right in his face. So <laughs> um, I have three daughters. I have a 24-year-old. I have a 14-year-old, Stasia. She's in the audience right there. And she also volunteers on the worship team. So you'll see her from time to time singing. And then we have an eight-year-old, Amelia, and she is amazing. She's a spitfire and super smart and all of the best things. So you'll have to introduce yourselves to her as well. A part of my story, I was born originally in Bucaramanga, Colombia, in South America. I was an orphan. I was found on the streets. And someone, um, God showed me favor. Someone picked us up, my sister and I, and brought us to a local orphanage where we were then adopted probably not even a year into being at that orphanage. But I wanted to share with you a quick story about my time in that orphanage. I had a friend, and her name was Otorra. So if you are Hispanic and you can roll your R's, okay? Um, where are my Hispanics over here? Anybody? Anybody? You can roll their R's? Um, <laughs> so Otorra was this amazing woman. She was an attorney, and she would come and visit the kids in the orphanage and just love on us. And I remember her great lipstick and her blazer and her patent leather shoes, and she would come in there all beautiful, and she would get on the floor, and she would hug us and tell us how wonderful and lovely and beautiful we were and how special and important we were. And I just need to tell you something. We didn't look that way, okay? We were in this room. We had no real underwear or anything. We peed and pooped in pots and pans uh, that were also strewn in that same room. And our bellies visibly moved with parasites. So we didn't look the picture of lovely, but that never stopped her from hugging us. And she took time in her life to reach the community that was around her. That is community care, to reach out, to be in relationship with the people around you. It is the act of loving people and actively giving people your time and your attention. One of my favorite passages uh, from the New Testament, it's John 13, six through 10, and it says, when Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, what are you doing? Are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. And Peter said, no, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. And then Peter said, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord. Not just my feet, Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. I love that passage, and I just, I love Peter. He is so extreme. I am extreme as well, so, you know, I kind of go from one side of this pendulum swing to the other, and so I resonate, and I definitely identify with Peter a lot because he is very extreme. And I feel like there are two pieces of that that really speak to me as a human being and as a follower of Jesus, and I want you to catch these two things. Peter wanted all of his body to be washed in order to prove that he belonged to Jesus. And I think that we get in this place in our head where we believe we need to look a certain way. We need to have that glow up, right? We need to be totally put together, all snatched, not having any stains on your shirt. Hello. I made it all the way here before that happened, just an FYI. But... I have that same thing, and I have scars. 
and I have hurts. And the only memories that I have of my biological mother are of things that she did to me. Those are the only vivid memories that I have of her. So I have emotional scars as well. And I will tell you, I have told my story to people in depth and in short many times, and what I have realized is if I had waited for all of the scars to be miraculously gone, if I had waited for every emotion to be wiped away from the memories of what has happened to me, I would never be able to love and serve people, and heaven would be a very lonely place. And just like Peter, and just like what Jesus said to Peter, all we need is the blood of Jesus. That transformation means we have the capacity to love and to serve and to give people our time and attention. And there's a second thing that I wanted you to understand about this passage where Peter said everything and all of it. When we serve people, it is not out of the place of needing to completely and transform them either. I want you to understand Jesus is the Savior. We are the vessels. We are the ones who go. And again, it is about being feet people. We walk a mile, maybe two, with people so that they can see that the difference between your story and my story and their story is only and ever the love and grace of Jesus. And I think a lot of times we're waiting because we're like, well, I just started a new job or I'm a single mom, or I, I'm just a student. What do I have to give to walk alongside of these people? But I will tell you, there is a world right here in our own backyard of single moms who need to hear from godly single moms about the love of Jesus. There is a world of students who are like, what is my identity? Where am I gonna go? What am I going to amount to? And they need to hear from godly students who know what it is to operate in the identity of Jesus. There are people who are going into new jobs and they are asking the same questions and they have a little bit of fear of their future. And they need to hear from you who have maybe started a new job or who maybe have just lost a job and they need to know that their future is set and secure because of Jesus. That is what community care is. And here at Weatherstone, our desire for community care is that we offer you opportunities for a door to be opened so that you can pray and dig deep and ask, is this a furthering of relationships? It is not just a one-off feel good. It is about relationship. So there will be a lot of things coming up and I am so excited and honored and privileged to be able to represent that on behalf of Pastor Brandon and Pastor Amber. Um, but you will be seeing more. And if you have questions, please feel free to seek me out. Thank you so much. We love you. So good. Amen. So good. Love, build, serve. Love, build, serve. I think we can do that. I think it's the heart of the Father. I think we can do that. Are you with us? Mm -hmm. yes. Can we love and build and serve and yeah. repeat? And re Amen. Over and over and over again. Hey, it's, it's a privilege to serve. I think it's a privilege to show love. I think it's a privilege to, to come together and, and build. And while we get to do all of these things, and I'm so excited for what God is going to do through us and for what we're going to do, um, I, I want to bring it all back around again to understanding that, that our salvation is based, though, on our faith. If you're in this place today and, and you have heard all of this and you're like, this is fun, I want to do all of those things, and maybe then like, I'll, be, I'll be close enough, know this, the gift of salvation is free. That we're not saved because of what we do, but we get to come together as a church because of what Christ has already done for us. That's where it starts. 
And I encourage you today, if, if, if you've never received the gift of salvation, if you've never, it's, it's a free gift. Romans says simply, it just says like, if, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord and confess that with your mouth, if you make him the Lord of your life, that you will be saved. Scripture says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's a promise. That's all it takes. And before we can go in and do, because even, even when we talk about love in, in that verse at the beginning, it was like, hey, love each other as I've loved you. For us to love people appropriately, we have to experience and receive the love that God has in store for us. We have to receive the gift of salvation. We have to receive who he is. Paul even said it this way in Romans chapter three. It says, then what becomes of our boasting? Hear me, I don't want to get to the end of 2022 and be like, look at all the things we did. Man, what a, like, like look, look how well we blessed the community. Look at all the people that we, that we served this year. Now, yes, there's things that we, that we track so that we can get better at it. And we got to make sure that, that, we're, that we're doing things well. And, and again, I don't, I, I'm not trying to be busy. I want to be intentional. I said that before. Like, are we being intentional? So we track things to make sure that we're intentional. But hear me, our boasting isn't in what we do. It says it, it, it is excluded. By what kind of law? By the law of works? No. It's by the law of faith. So today, before we close, I just, I want to do this. If you just want to bow your heads and close your eyes and just take a moment and even evaluate your life. Because I think there's times that, that while, we're, while we're here and we think, man, am I a loving person? Do I love people well? Am I building up my family, my, my group of, my core group of friends? Am I building up the community? Am I serving people or am I pretty selfish with, with who I am? I promise you that so much of the answers of those, if any of those is no, comes back to, have I truly experienced the love of Jesus Christ? And if today you need to experience love, if today you need to experience freedom, today that gift is available for you, and it's simply by saying yes to Jesus. So today I just want to ask you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if if today you say, I need to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. Here's what I want you to do. Nobody looking around. I just want you to slip up your hand and say, hey, that's me. Pastor Brandon, I'm, I'm in. Please include me in this prayer at the end. If that's you today. Because we can't do anything before that moment. Anybody in this place today? Awesome. I see you. Thank you. Scripture says if we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved. So what I want to do is I want to lead you in a prayer. But it's not just for people who raise their hand. It's for, we, we're, we all pray together, all right? Because when we come together as a church, when you say yes to Jesus, you need to know something. We believe that community talk that we just talked about. People don't pray alone here. We pray with them because we want to walk alongside you in this. So would everybody in this room repeat these words after me and just say, Dear God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to this earth to die on a cross. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've fallen short. But today I believe that through Jesus' death and resurrection that I can be made whole. Today I receive you Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I commit to following you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, can we give God praise for what he's about to do? So good.